Welcome to Creatively Using the Creative Suite. Here's your host, Eric Burnskill. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Creatively Using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Burnskill and this week I want to show you how you can create a wood tile inside of Photoshop and also make it into a seamless pattern that you can fill again uh, for example, in larger spaces, you only need to create a pattern which isn't that large to begin with. So let's go ahead and start creating a new file. Let's go with 600 by 600 pixels. And with this file, I'm going to go to Filter. I'm going to go to Render and Fibers. But before I do that, I want to make sure that my foreground and background colors are reset. So if they aren't set to black and white and foreground black, background white, just hit the D key on your keyboard to reset them to the defaults. Then again, go to filters, render fibers, and you get the fibers dialog. You don't want a very strong pattern. So I think somewhere, say variance four or five with the strength set to about 10, click OK, and you get what looks to be a bit lame and not much like wood at all. To fix that, I'm going to go and add an adjustment layer here for hue and saturation. This is going to bring up my adjustments panel where I can remember to hit my colorize button and then I can begin to colorize this more like a wooden texture, decreasing the lightness here quite a bit, increasing saturation quite a bit, and then hitting the right hue here with the color that I want. I'm going to go for a fairly red sort of a tree let's do with something something like this now to finish up the effect I'm going to close down my adjustments panel in my layers panel make sure to target this background layer now and we can go to filter blur and surface blur and I'm just going to give it a tad give it a little blur here you can see the preview it just makes it slightly more uneven in the way that a tree sometimes does look so I'm going to make sure just give it this little blur and this is just a bit of experimentation I think somewhere with these settings will will work nicely for this example so 9 radius 13 threshold Click OK, and we basically have our wooden pattern. But to make this now repeatable, or a seamless tile, we're going to go ahead and first collapse this, and I'm going to merge this down. So Command-E on the Mac, Control-E on the PC to merge the hue and saturation layer down to the background layer. This creates our wooden tile. And in order to make this scalable, or make it a pattern, I need to double click on the background layer, so I can turn it into an ordinary layer, click OK. And then I'm going to use my marquee tool, rectangular marquee tool, and I'm just going to select the right hand side of this, pretty much half and half. And I'm going to use Command X, which is Control X on the PC, to cut this out and then paste it back in again. And I'm going to now make sure to move it over to the left hand side so it touches and snaps to the left hand side edge. I'm going to take the bottommost layer, which is what was on the left hand side, and move this across to the right. And in this case, since I'm working with a wooden texture, I'm getting a very seamless tile here in the middle. Um, and it differs from what you're tiling, but in this case, and with a wooden texture here, the seam went very seamless. But we're going to do it once more. So I'm going to merge these down, and I'm going to select the bottommost part here and I'm going to do the same thing command X on the Mac control X on the PC to cut this out paste it back in move this to the top so it snaps and then move the top bit down to the bottom and this in this case we get a seam we get a big seam so to fix that I'm just going to paste this in again I'm going to make sure it comes in at the far top so we get a little wooden piece just hanging a of the seam here so effectively we have two seams to fix this I'm gonna add a layer mask using the layer mask icon in the layers panel and I'm gonna use the gradient tool 
I want to make sure now that my foreground color is set to black. So if it isn't, hit D and then X to switch it around. Make sure the foreground color is set to black. Then I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And using now my, uh, my gradient tool, I'm going to go ahead and just apply a little gradient here to the fold. So since I'm using a black to transparent gradient, I'm going to first come in here from the top. I'm drawing up and down, and then reverse thing at the bottom here, just folding this in to make it a little bit more believable here, and the seam pretty much disappears now. And if you want to make it even more seamless, you can go ahead and grab a brush tool, and at different hardness and sizes here, you want to go ahead and just give give it some brushes up and down, and try and make sure to get rid of the seam here that you've created. So now it's a more seamless pattern here and it's one we made before and we made it ourselves. So I'm gonna merge all of these down to the bottom and I'm gonna go edit. I'm gonna go to define pattern and I'm gonna call it wood texture. Click OK and then let's create a new file. Let's go with a thousand by a thousand pixels. So this is a much larger pattern. I'm gonna unlock the background layer, gonna go into my blending options and I'm gonna use the pattern overlay now to select the wood pattern we just created. You're gonna see here that it is tiling. So if I scale this down, you will see some repetition here. Um, and that's because I wasn't overly good at the middle part of the seam here. So that will look repetitive, but that's also how you've created the wallpaper or created the wooden texture from the beginning. But still it scales fairly good here uh, at a good 100% size, scales up and it's very usable as a wooden texture and it's scalable. So that's it, creating a wooden texture from scratch in Photoshop using the fibers and then making it into a seamless background using a simple and easily remembered technique. Thank you for watching this episode of the Creatively Using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Burnsgill, and I'll hopefully be seeing you back next week with another tip, trick, and tutorial. Bye-bye.